This is a 200 meter skyscraper. It soars 50 floors above Singapore. It has to battle wind loads and seismic forces, requiring some incredible engineering just to stop it from collapsing under its own weight. It's the same as, well, pretty much every other skyscraper. But what if we added another 200 meter tower right next to it? And instead of it just standing there, what if we leaned them inwards and against each other like this? Then what if we added a few more and balanced a 340 meter skyscraper on its side over the top of the lot? Quite frankly, it's insane. This is Marina Bay Sands. You've probably seen it already. It's become an iconic emblem of Singapore. But the fact this building remains upright is nothing short of an engineering miracle, and I don't think it gets enough credit for how game-changing it really was. Plus, it's not done yet. To really understand Marina Bay Sands, you've got to understand Singapore's ambition. In the early 2000s, Singapore was already a thriving financial hub, but the country knew that to compete with cities like Hong Kong, Dubai and Las Vegas, it needed more than just banks and office towers. It needed attractions, a cultural and entertainment hub that could draw in tourists, conventions and attention. The government launched a bold plan, transform the Marina Bay waterfront into a new focal point for the city. At the heart of that vision would be a mega resort. In 2006, the contract went to Las Vegas Sands Corporation. Their idea, designed by star architect Moshe Safdie, stood out not only for its scale, but for its daring design. Safdie's concept was about more than creating an icon, it was about urban integration. The three hotel towers were sculpted to resemble a deck of cards being shuffled, a nod to the casino that sits in sight. These would lean slightly inward, opening towards the waterfront and framing the city beyond. The towers would then flare at the base, creating a continuous atrium that connects all three buildings. Each leg of the tower would lean against the other, creating a non-uniform curved form. It looked beautiful but resulted in an enormous technical and engineering challenge. Because of the flared design, the primary forces acting on the towers were gravitational loads rather than wind or seismic forces like you might see in more typical skyscrapers. Engineers would have to make sure that the buildings wouldn't just not fall over in the wind, but that their sheer weight and the way they lean in against each other wouldn't cause them to collapse in on themselves. Then, quite literally on top of all that, there was the Sky Park, a vast public space that at 1.2 hectares was large enough to hold gardens, restaurants, an observation deck, and the now world-famous Infinity Pool. Even if you're not building the Marina Bay Sands, there's no such thing as a simple job if you're an architect. How familiar is this scenario? You're racing towards a tight deadline with three site analysis diagrams left. You've got unread messages from your project manager and you haven't even checked if your building's meeting floor area requirements yet. Thankfully, that's where Snaptrude can take the pressure off. With their new AI assistant, you can upload your RFP, select your project site, share your building's intended use, and then they'll help you build the perfect layout. They've even got you covered on the legwork with their built-in AI research, which means you can spend less time searching endlessly through pages of zoning code or confusing ancient site maps and more time actually designing. Now, architects can do their program editing, site analysis, zoning research, massing and visualization all within their browser. It's like Moshe Safdie once said, great architecture isn't about showing off what's possible with money or technology. It's about creating buildings that make sense, that feel natural to build, and that find beauty in that simplicity. And that's what Snaptrude's all about. It wasn't built to chase flashy, impossible designs using artificial intelligence just for the sake of it. It's designed to help take you from concept to buildable design faster with tools that actually make sense. Click the link below or scan the QR code on screen to see how Snaptrude can help you with your next deadline. We want to say a massive thank you to Snaptrude for sponsoring today's video and for some of the awesome models which they provided which you can see on screen as part of it. As always guys, don't forget that when you go and check out our video sponsors it directly supports the channel so please do take the time to go and do that. Now, back to Safdie. So, from the very beginning, Safdie's design had one big question hanging over it. Could engineers actually make it stand up? 
the thing you've got to know about Safdie is that he loves an impossible building, right? To the point where the building looks like it could have come out of a cartoon. Just look at the structures that made him famous. These are the original designs for Habitat 67 in Montreal. Enormous housing structures that just like Marina Bay Sands, leaned against each other. He carried this on in his further works too, like the Altair Tower and Habitat Ching Huang Do. Ching Han Duo. <sighs> Ching Huang Do. He carried this on in his further works too, like the Altair Tower and Habitat Ching Huang Do. But was this audacious design for Singapore even possible? The first challenge was the site itself. The land right here, where Marina Bay Sands was to be constructed, didn't actually exist 50 years earlier. It was reclaimed from the sea using sand fill. So from the 1970s all the way up to the 1990s, these enormous barriers were put in to hold back the water, and then that space was filled to create more land mass, which is hardly the most stable surface to construct three 55-storey towers on. To counter this, engineers had to sink 5,000 piles as deep as 50 metres into the ground. These piles transferred the load to firmer rock and soil beneath the reclaimed land. Without them, the towers could sink or tilt. Each pile was carefully tested, and the foundations became one of the largest piling operations in Singapore's history. Once they were in place, construction of the three towers began in 2007. Each was built separately, rising in stages from the ground. But of course, the towers don't stand perfectly upright. They lean inward by up to 26 degrees to create that vast atrium at ground level. So aligning these towers precisely was critical. If they were even slightly off, the sky park wouldn't fit. Surveyors used laser technology and GPS monitoring to keep everything within millimetre accuracy. To combat the engineering challenges of the flared legs, reinforced concrete shear walls, roughly 71 centimetres thick at their base, were arranged around the towers. These act as the primary vertical and transverse support. Post-tensioned flat slabs were placed between the shear walls in the floor. This also created greater structural efficiency and allowed for flexible rim layouts. Massive steel trusses on the mechanical level tie the flared legs of each tower together. This again made the structure stronger and helped the towers resist significant shear forces at the transition points. Because of the asymmetrical design, during construction there were temporary supports and real-time monitoring on each of the towers. Engineers had to keep a really close eye on them as they went up. By 2009, the three towers had topped out at 55 storeys, around 200 metres tall. But the real challenge was yet to come. The Sky Park really is the heart of the Marina Bay Sands. It's a 340 metre long structure that sits on top of the three towers, contains more than 7,000 tonnes of steel, and extends for 67 metres beyond the edge of the final tower. To build it, engineers divided it into 14 segments, each weighing hundreds of tons. These were prefabricated off-site, then floated in by barge and hoisted into place by strand jacks, powerful lifting machines that could slowly pull the sections into position. It was one of the most complex lifting operations ever attempted. Each segment had to be placed with absolute precision. If the towers had shifted even slightly during construction, the sky park wouldn't align. The operation often took several days per segment and was sometimes conducted overnight to try and reduce wind exposure and stop things being quite literally blown away. At 200 meters high, wind gusts could destabilize a segment, so the lifts were carefully timed during calm weather windows. Once at its desired elevation, each segment was slid into position and welded to the piece that had been placed there beforehand. Every single aspect of this operation had to be incredibly precise down to the millimeter. To pull off this incredible feat, the engineering team took their inspiration from how bridges are built to develop a construction method. The cantilevered section, projecting out over the city, was the most daring of all. The team had to design an internal truss system that distributed the enormous weight back into the tower. As of today, it remains the world's largest public cantilevered platform. Holding it all together is a hidden steel framework running beneath the sky park. At its heart are giant box-shaped beams, some nearly three storeys tall, that carry the load of the deck. These are tied together with long steel trusses stretching between the towers, while V-shaped supports rise from the rooftops to connect back into the concrete cores. This arrangement spreads the forces evenly, counteracts the pull of the cantilever, and keeps the sky park steady despite the natural movements of the towers below. 
Engineers also had to account for the fact that these towers would move slowly and subtly over the course of a day and indeed over the course of their entire lifetimes in response to thermal expansion, wind loads and concrete shrinkage. In fact, the sky park can move up to 20 millimetres every day. That's something that every skyscraper has to contend with, but what they don't face is having three separate towers linked together at the top. To allow for movement without ripping the sky park apart, joints are included between each tower. There are also 500 hydraulic jacks included underneath the infinity ball so that its alignment can be adjusted over time. There's also a 5 tonne tuned mass damper to counter wind induced and human induced vibrations. Of all the features, none captured the public imagination quite like the infinity pool. At 150 metres long, it's the largest rooftop pool in the world. Swimming there feels like floating above the city, the water appearing to spill off into the skyline. But building a pool this high up isn't easy. The structure had to be divided into three sections, each aligned with one of the towers beneath it. Expansion joints were added to let the pool flex and shift as the towers move with wind and even the settling of their foundations. Without these joints, the rigid concrete shell of the pool would quickly crack under the strain. Even the water had to be safely managed. Hidden tanks and pumps constantly balance its level, creating that seamless, edgeless effect and holding millions of litres of water safely in place. The pool and the deck of cards towers are such an iconic sight that it's often easy to forget that architectural wizardry aside, this is actually a hotel running a vast operation. Across its 845,000 square metres, it boasts 2,500 rooms and suites, the world's largest atrium casino, a luxury mall complete with canals, two theatres, a lotus flower shaped museum, and countless restaurants and bars. Coordinating all those different functions was an immense design challenge in itself. Engineers had to ensure efficient circulation, fire safety, and integration with the city's transport systems, all while maintaining the building's sleek look. By the time it opened in April 2010, Marina Bay Sands had cost $5.5 billion, making it one of the most expensive standalone casino resorts ever constructed. The global financial crisis of 2008 hit partway through construction, raising doubts about whether it could even be finished. But Singapore and Las Vegas Sands pushed ahead, convinced of the project's long-term value. And they were right. Within a few years, Marina Bay Sands became one of the most profitable casinos in the world. Its convention centre played host to global events, and its sky park became one of the most visited attractions in all of Asia. Beyond profits, the project achieved what Singapore had originally set out to do and transformed its global image. Marina Bay Sands gave the city a recognisable icon, like the Eiffel Tower of Paris or Sydney's Opera House. It became the centrepiece of Marina Bay's developments and of Singapore. Marina Bay Sands is rightfully considered one of the world's greatest engineering marvels. In the hands of a group of visionary architects and engineers, it went from an impossible sketch to the most iconic structure on the Singapore skyline. And it's about to get even bigger, because today Marina Bay Sands is adding a fourth tower. At 55 storeys, the new tower will lean forward, rotated at a 45 degree angle. It too will have a sky park, this time over two levels. It'll also include public observatories and restaurants, rooftop gardens, private cabanas, yoga zones, and a cantilevered wellness terrace. Beneath it is a 15,000 seat entertainment arena designed by the minds behind the Las Vegas Sphere. Originally estimated at 3.3 billion US dollars, it's now bumped up to around 8 billion US dollars, which shows how complicated and ambitious this project really is. Safdi has already built Singapore's icon, and now he's adding to his masterpiece. Only time can tell if it'll be successful, but either way, it'll certainly be as expensive. Don't forget that today's video was sponsored by Snaptrude. You can learn more about that at the link below. And as always, guys, if you enjoyed this video and you want to get more from the definitive video channel for construction, make sure you're subscribed to the B1M.